so does Georgia. Do the Georgia Bulldogs, the preseason favorite to win the national championship in 2024, does Georgia have a quarterback controversy? No, but they do have questions to answer at the quarterback position. And that's what we're going to talk about on this week's edition of How About That Dogs Cast. We've been here before. In the modern era of Georgia football, we have seen this, where the dogs have two capable quarterbacks, but everybody wants the ball. And sometimes it's harder than other times to figure out who should be the guy running the show. Now, for Georgia, the good news is, heading into 2024, that's not a problem. I mean, I have been one of the loudest voices for the longest, telling you that Carson Beck is the guy at Georgia. I told you last season he was going to win the job. I told you last season that he was going to have a big year, and he finished just short of 30 touchdowns and 4,000 yards passing. Led the dogs to an undefeated regular season and a victory in the Orange Bowl. No, Carson Beck is the guy. There is no question there. The question comes about Gunnar Stockton. Because like I said, the dogs have been here before where they have two capable quarterbacks. Now you have a young backup who needs to play because he needs to improve. And that is the only way he's going to be ready when and if he is actually needed to win a game for Georgia in 2024. The question is, what does that look like? How do Georgia, how does Georgia go about making sure that they keep their number one quarterback happy, healthy, and productive, while at the same time making certain that they get their young and inexperienced but very talented quarterback, who is number two, ready to play. I mean, it's a, it's a, a great problem to have. When you have more than one guy that can spin the bean, can lead your team, and has proven that he is a winner, that's a good problem. Georgia's quarterback room is almost right there. Here's what we know about Gunnar Stockton. We know that he was a very highly touted high school player. We know that he came into Georgia after decommitting from the University of South Carolina. And we know that he is on record as saying that he wants to graduate from the University of Georgia. Now, like I said, we've seen all this before. In the modern era of Georgia football, we have seen multiple instances where Georgia had two quarterbacks and they had to figure out what to do. And sometimes that played out really well, and other times it played out with mixed results. I think that's the safest thing to say. But again, the question is, what does it look like? What does it look like? The reality is Gunner needs to play, but there must be a plan in place to do that in an effective way that doesn't disrupt the overall chemistry or production of what looks to be a championship caliber football team in 2024. So let's look back at it just a little bit. First, we had Coach Richt, and he had both David Green and DJ Shockley on the roster at the same time for a long time. And that was a situation where both men handled it really well. Shockley split time in 2002, 2003, and 2004 before being named first team all SEC in 2005 and leading Georgia to an SEC championship. Green wasn't too shabby either. I mean, he secured his place in dogs history with a hobnail boot as a redshirt freshman on the road in 2001, he led Georgia to an SEC championship in 2002, and he finished his career as the winningest quarterback in NCAA Division I history with 42 victories over four years. 
And a few years later, the situation would crop up again. Except this time, now we were talking about Jake Fromm and Justin Fields. Jake Fromm stepped in for an injured Jacob Eason, and the rest is history, as they say. He led Georgia to an SEC title, a win over Oklahoma in the 2018 Rose Bowl, and a national championship game appearance as a true freshman. Now, his sophomore junior years, it could be argued that his production didn't match up and Georgia's production on the field wasn't up to par. But overall, Fromm had a solid career in Georgia. Justin Fields served as Jake Fromm's backup as a freshman in 2018, seeing action in 12 games before choosing to transfer to Ohio State rather than come back and compete for the starting job or just wait behind Jake Fromm. Now here we are today. Once again, two talented quarterbacks, not exactly the same situation. But it's the sort of thing that coaches get paid big money to figure out. The goal for every coach is to get the best players on the field, the players that are going to give you the very best chance to win. Here, again, there's no discussion. Carson Beck is QB1 in Athens. That is not what we're talking about. But what we are talking about is that Carson Beck came into Georgia as a 2018 Florida Mr. Football as a junior, and he led his high school, Mandarin, a non-traditional power in the state, to a state championship. He came to Georgia as a high-ranked high recruit. He waited his turn. And then in 2023, all he did was roll out there, go 12-1, and one, throw for 3,941 yards and 28 touchdowns. By any measure, Carson Beck had a tremendous first year as a starter, and all indications point to the fact that he's going to be even better in year two. But the other guy in this equation is Gunnar Stockton. Now, Gunnar was a five-star recruit in the class of 2022. He was a four-time All-State selection here in Georgia and the Gatorade Player of the Year in 2021 as a senior. So the question is, will this time play out any different than the other times that Georgia had dual quarterbacks, if you will. And I'm going to go ahead and say it that way, and I'm going to explain it on the other side. Because when you have a clear starting quarterback, we're not talking about a quarterback controversy. We're talking about how can you make your team better. And in some instances, that means that you deploy a dual quarterback system. Now, that is not what I think Georgia's going to do. But I do think that Gunnar Stockton is going to have a chance to make a difference this season on the field for the Georgia Bulldogs. I'll tell you one thing that makes the difference in my life, and that is the fact that Premier Heating and Air keeps my family healthy, happy, and comfortable. We'll talk about how Gunnar Stockton can make more of a difference for the dogs on the field right after this. Y'all know we talk about champions, and that's why I want to tell you about the premier difference with a premier club membership from Premier Heating and Air. Regardless of the changes that come with the seasons, winter, spring, summer, or football, some things will never change. I'm going to be comfortable in my own home, and the comfort and well-being of my family will always be my top priority. If you feel the same way, choosing Premier Heating and Air is the play to take care of all of your family's needs when it comes to keeping you cool and comfortable in your home or business. Whether you're looking to keep your current HVAC system running at peak performance, you need to replace an aging system, or you're adding on to your home and need to upgrade to a larger heating and air system, which is what I did a few years back when we built an addition onto our home, Premier Heating and Air has got you covered. Be sure to check out their Premier Club membership offer to keep your home heating and cooling systems running at peak performance and avoid costly repairs in the future. 
Just click the link in the description below today to get started and give yourself the gift of time, freedom, and peace of mind to focus on the most important things in your life. The choice is clear, y'all. You've just got to experience Premier. Now, we're a few practices in to spring practice here in 2024 for the Georgia Bulldogs, and certainly things like this are already being discussed. I heard Kirby talk about this the other day where he said, "You, as a coach, you can get overwhelmed when you start to do installation with a really young football team, which he classifies this 2024 squad as young. So one of the things they want to do is take each of their practice opportunities to break it down and focus on one thing here or there so as not to overwhelm their young players to make sure that everyone is actually having an opportunity to grow and improve. Now, the quarterback position will be no different. It's the same for Carson Beck as he has stated he has things he wants to work on here in the spring. But of course, for a guy like Gunner, who is clearly, well, at this point anyway, clearly the number two quarterback heading into the season, there are a myriad of things that he needs to work on, and he cannot take enough reps, even during spring and the offseason, to prepare himself to play up to the Georgia standard should he have to later this year. So he's out there working on things every day after practice all the time. Without a doubt, I have complete confidence in that, and I have confidence in the coaching staff to help him along and help him get ready. But this is spring, and G-Day is coming. And if you're not going to use this time to talk about things like maybe variations on a way that you might have done things in the past, or how can we make our team better or give ourselves an advantage, whether it's in the number of weapons we have on the field at one time or simply whether... Uh, they're talking about being able to leverage an opponent uh, in, a, in some kind of way that maybe they couldn't do it last year. I mean, that is what spring practice is all about, is to do that. And I have to believe that the Georgia football coaching staff is looking at the quarterback position and understanding that they have someone in Gunnar Stockton that, again, is very talented. They've seen him on the field. They know what he can do. And they know that they need to play him and they're trying to figure out how to get that done. So if you're going to get it done, what are some of the considerations that you would have to think about as you head into 2024? If you're being responsible, if you're being fair to the young man, as well as the football team. Again, we talked about these instances in the past. If you think back to coach Rick and Green and Shockley, they implemented a series rotation at times. When you talk about Jake Fromm and Justin Fields, that didn't quite work as smoothly as I'm certain Kirby would have wanted it to work. And it appeared jerky, and Justin would be in the game either in mop-up time or, uh, you know, very sparingly throughout the game. And he, he never really got into a rhythm. In, in a way, maybe it wasn't fair to Justin that it went down that way. But that speaks to who Kirby is as the head coach and the philosophy he has and how he wants to do things. So if we're talking about considerations, I think we have to start at the beginning when we're talking about Gunner. And remember, he didn't come to Georgia straight out of high school. He came to Georgia after having committed to the University of South Carolina. Now, why did he do that? Because Georgia was clearly in a better position than South Carolina at the time clearly wanted him, but he chose the Gamecocks. The reason that happened was because of a long-standing family relationship between Gunner and his family and Mike Bobo. When Mike Bobo was no longer at South Carolina and was going to be back at Georgia, that's when Gunner decided that Georgia was the place for him. And as I mentioned earlier, he went on to say that he has every intention of graduating from the University of Georgia. Now, 2022, Gunnar took a red shirt. 2023, last season, he was active. So he was a red shirt freshman last year. So now we're looking at a red shirt sophomore year where he's heading into the season as a clear number two, meaning that Carson Beck will be out of eligibility after this season. 
So it's clear that Gunner has his eyes on 2025 to be able to take over the reins of what looks to be an ever-expanding and improving Georgia offense. Well, that sounds like the perfect plan. But as we all know, plans go out the window the minute the bullet starts flying, right? The minute the games begin, the minute the season starts to unfold, the best laid plans are the folly of men. So we know that Gunner has every reason to want to stay at the University of Georgia. We can tick it off real quick. Again, the relationship with Bobo and his family. The fact that he has his eyes on being the starter for the dogs next season. The fact that he's been working behind the scenes away from the football field. He may be on track to graduate in three years. We don't know that. Maybe that's the case. There are so many factors that a young man has to consider these days, especially a young man playing a premium position like quarterback. We know he's talented, but he's inexperienced. That's one of the biggest considerations for this whole thing. As good as Carson Beck was last season, he vaulted himself into the conversation to be a Heisman contender here in 2024, to be the starting quarterback on the best team heading into the 2024 season. And his name is on the lips of people who are talking about things like first round draft pick, first quarterback taken. Again, we mentioned the Heisman. NIL is paying off really well for Carson these days. He's living the good life as QB1 at the University of Georgia. He's the guy. But Gunner is talented. And they have to get him some experience. The one thing that could absolutely derail Georgia's season would be an injury to the guy that many people, including myself, have hailed as the best returning quarterback in college football in 2024. If you remove him from the equation, everything changes for Georgia. Now, even from our experience of recent years, the examples that I've already talked about, the Jake Fromm model, if something were to happen to Carson Beck, and everybody, let's knock on wood, let's hope that doesn't happen, but if it did, Who's to say that Gunner, Gunner could not step in and lead Georgia to a championship, SEC and beyond? He's surrounded by what everyone seems to consider to be the best team, the best roster heading into 2024. So it's feasible that he could do it. Fromm had to learn under fire. They had to keep things simple, run the football, and let that defense play while Fromm grew up. That's how he was successful. He wasn't asked to do too much for Georgia. Clearly, the situation would have to be the same at this point for Gunner. He has no real catalog of live game action to look at and say, this is who this young man is as a player. Not at the collegiate level. We know he's a winner at the high school level. We know he's a competitor. We know he's physically gifted. But we don't know if he can cut the mustard in the SEC week after week after week. We just don't know. Just because he hasn't doesn't mean he can't. It just means that we don't know. So any responsible football coach would be like, I don't want to have to find out. We have to find a way to get this young man some quality repetitions in live game action, let him run the offense, let him throw the ball, and let's see what we've got. Give him a chance to learn. That has to be priority number one for Georgia here in 2024, getting their backup quarterback some experience. Young and talented, but inexperienced. That is a huge piece of this discussion. But that's not the only thing. Remember, I told you, he was highly touted, highly regarded, 
heavily recruited out of high school. He has said and done everything up to this point to show everyone involved that he wants to be the next quarterback at the University of Georgia. But in today's college football, you can never say never. We just saw what happened at Alabama. Just yesterday, they had a five-star prospect, all SEC, all freshman team member that had transferred out after Nick Saban decided to retire, change his mind and transfer, or at least let everyone believe that he is choosing to transfer back to play for the Tide. Never say never. Who knows? If the season plays out, Carson Beck takes 98% of the snaps, has a tremendous year, Georgia wins the national championship, everything is hunky-dory, except for maybe Gunner. Maybe he's not too happy about that. Maybe promises were made and not kept. And maybe he decides that he's going to transfer. Unlikely, in my opinion. But you can never say never. NIL has changed the game. And if you think there are people out there that would not come looking if they needed a quarterback and they had any inkling that a player like Gunnar Stockton was looking around, then you are fooling yourself. More than that, if we know anything about Kirby Smart, we know he is going to continue to recruit the very best players at every position to have the best roster in college football that will give his team the best chance to win each Saturday in the fall. Just look at what is in the quarterback room right now. Ryan Pugliese, very highly thought of. Some say the kid could have been a five-star player. That is a talented player already on campus and learning the system that is going to be pushing and fighting to learn everything he can to get every rep he can along the way. And then if we spin it out just one year, look at the next class. You've got the name like Juju Lewis hanging out there. Now, we all know he's committed to Southern California. There are a lot of people who believe that is not where he will end up. Now, there are no guarantees he's going to come to Georgia. But the point is the dogs are going to continue to recruit him. And the more that they recruit him, the greater the possibilities that he winds up in Athens as well. And now Carson wins the title, rides off into the sunset. Gunner says, it's my job, but it won't be handed to him because now he will have to fight off Puglisi with a year of experience under his belt. And everybody's all world can't miss next big thing, Juju Lewis, if he were to decide to come. And if it's not Juju Lewis, it's still going to be a talented football player that Kirby Smart is going to bring into Athens. The dogs will compete at that position. But Gunnar knows that. He knew that when he came. He sees it every day. This is no surprise to him. But it is a factor when we're talking about the transfer portal and the lure of NIL in today's college football. Now, if I were a betting man, and I'm not, but if I were, I would bet that none of this matters to Gunner and he's going to stay. But you can't know that. And the coaches certainly cannot assume that. Because again, if he doesn't leave, injuries happen. Which leads me to my next point. The thing about Gunner is that he absolutely brings a different sort of skill set than Carson brings to the game for the dogs. Not only can he throw it, extremely accomplished as a high school player here in the state of Georgia, but he also can run the thing. And what most people have to say about Gunnar Stockton and his style of play once they have witnessed what he can do on the football field is, yeah, he's got wonderful, wonderful skills as a runner. He can throw it around the yard, plenty of arm strength, not a problem. Great anticipation. But the thing about what Gunner does as a runner 
is that he is also a very intense competitor. And sometimes he forgets that he is not a 220 pound tailback. And maybe the one thing that would keep Gunner from being as successful as he could be in the SEC at the Division I level would be the fact that he goes so hard when he decides to pull the ball down, that he lays it on the line too much and he puts himself at risk too often. So, yes, he adds a skill set to your offense, but he also because of the way he plays, brings an added risk of injury. So even if you take him and work him into the game, regardless of how you do it, you can only play the sport one way. While we're on that point, let me just say this. For the record, I've said it here before, but it, it bears repeating. Football is not a contact sport. Football is a violent sport. And a player like Gunnar Stockton knows only one way to play the game. So yes, added skill set. You could put him on the field, line him up in the slot even. He's that sort of athlete. Throw it to him on a swing pass, a bubble pass. Give it to him on a reverse, a direct snap. Put him in the backfield. There are numerous ways that Bobo could deploy his new weapon, this new toy that he has in Gunnar Stockton. All the while... He's being tempered by the thought that I can't get my backup quarterback hurt. So he is literally between a rock and a hard place when it comes to Gunner and how to best help him mature, gain experience, and develop. There are people with opinions about this from every way that you can imagine it. To keep it simple, the three that you hear most commonly tossed out there would be you have packages, certain packages set aside in the game where you would bring Gunner in certain downs and distances, maybe certain parts of the field, maybe in a certain personnel group. And that's how you would get him in the game, in the middle of the game when it mattered to help your team win and get him experience situationally, they might choose to use him. Say they're inside the 10-yard line. And for whatever reason, maybe Georgia's having a hard time running the football down there this year. Now, keep in mind, last year, Georgia scored on 91% of their trips into the red zone. Last year, execution inside the tight box, when everything gets smaller and more uh, muddied, was not a problem. Georgia excelled in that area. But let's say this year's different. Let's say it doesn't go that way. Maybe you consider putting your running quarterback in to give yourself an extra hat in the run game, an extra blocker. So situationally, maybe Gunner could get some experience, some live action snaps. But again, he only knows one way to play, so that risk of injury is there. But it might be worth it. Or do you go the Green and Shockley route where you go full-on concrete plan quarterback rotation? Series here, series here, or 2-1-1, or 2-2-1, or 2-1-2, or whatever it is. Now, personally, I'm not a real fan of any of these least of all the rotation because you hear the argument and I'm somebody who says it a lot about rhythm and football players have to play football, especially at a position like quarterback. There are no warm up pitches in football. You got to come out and deliver first snap. You got to be ready to go. So maybe you're doing a really good job on offense. You bring in your backup and everything stalls. And then you bring your starter back in and you're like, well, we're going to jump right back to where we were. No, because you busted his rhythm because you wanted to play the other guy. It's a tough nut to crack. But regardless of which one of these things you might settle on, packages, situational play, or a full-on rotation, 
Then these coordinators, these analysts, these assistant graduate coaches, all of these people who are around the program and focused on the quarterback specifically, all of them have to figure out a way to implement that plan, then have it executed without any drop-off, without disrupting the offensive rhythm. That sounds like some kind of math that I don't want to mess with. It just sounds like you're complicating the recipe more than you have to. But we all know that Gunner has to have some experience or you run the risk of the season disintegrating should something happen to Carson Beck. Because I have sat right here and talked to you week after week, made the argument time after time about how I fully expect this Georgia offense to be explosive this year. I expect Carson Beck to have a better season than he had last year. I expect the offense to be more productive overall than it was a year ago. But all of that hinges on number 15 being under center for the Georgia Bulldogs. If it's Carson Beck, it's all good. If it has to be Gunnar Stockton, all bets are off because we can't know. That's why this is such a big deal. But then what about Carson Beck? What about QB1, the guy that everybody is expecting big things from this year? We mentioned earlier that he is a legitimate Heisman candidate in 2024. Some people say he's the favorite. Well, I can tell you this much, at least publicly, Kirby Smart doesn't care. So what does that inform us about how it would play out in Kirby's mind with regard to getting experience for his number two? It's interesting because the thing that would be impacted directly by less time on the field clearly would be statistics, his numbers, Carson's overall production for the season. That's what would be impacted, but Kirby doesn't care. He doesn't care about the Heisman. That's not the goal. He doesn't care whether or not Carson Beck throws for 4,000 yards. That's not the goal. The goal is to win the game. Now, if Carson throws for 4,000 yards, that's great, as long as Georgia wins. Now, Carson has said everything that he needs to say to be on the right side of this discussion. So, again, we're not talking about Carson here. He's fine. We're talking about things that you would consider. So if you're not Carson, if you're the head coach, if you're the offensive coordinator, how much does this stuff figure in to what you want to do over the course of the season and ultimately how it plays into you achieving your goals? There's a lot to consider there. The bottom line is Kirby Smart will tell you, Mike Bobo will tell you, Carson Beck will tell you, Gunnar Stockton will tell you. Winning is the only thing that matters, regardless of how we do it. If the Georgia quarterbacks need to turn around and hand the ball off 35 times, that's what they're going to do. If they need to try to put 50 on the board because the young defense for Georgia early in the season hasn't found their footing yet, then that's what they're going to try to do. All those personal accolades are secondary. But it is a consideration because Carson Beck chose to come back for a reason. One of those reasons in the ultimate decision he made was to get better as a quarterback, which means you have to do quarterback things. Throw a better deep ball. Increase your percentages on this route. And so on. The only way you can do that is if you're in the game. If Gunnar Stockton is in the game, 
Every pass he throws is one you don't. So, yeah, winning is what it's all about. But don't think for one second that those numbers don't matter. Even if they don't matter to the people in Athens, they matter to the people observing, the people who decide those individual accolades. So it matters, but winning is the only thing that matters to the dogs. Now, the other part that we don't have to worry about here, that we don't really have to give any credence to at all, is whether or not there's some sort of problem inside the quarterback room. We've already talked about the fact that they have three quality players on scholarship at the University of Georgia right now. They want a fourth. Now, if I'm wrong on that, somebody leave me a comment below and let me know. But I believe that there are three scholarship quarterbacks currently at the University of Georgia. In Kirby's mind, he's short. You need four that you can rotate through just to practice the way they want to practice. So back to my original point earlier, he's going to keep bringing talent into the room. There is going to be competition. But I think that we've seen enough from Carson Beck and Gunnar Stockton to know that there is no personal rivalry there. They went through the competition last season. Carson was the leader the entire way, got the job, played outstanding for Georgia in 2023. He's back. Everybody sort of knows their role this year. Everybody is supporting each other trying to make each other better in any way you can. So I don't think dissension or bitterness or selfishness are words that we have to say again the rest of the season when we're talking about the quarterback room. No, what they have to do is what we've been talking about for the last 40 minutes, which is just find a way to make the Georgia Bulldogs better to help Gunnar Stockton improve and grow at the position. To help the University of Georgia win championships in 2024. That's the goal. It's not about individual things. It's about team success. Because as we all know, if you have the team success, then everything else will take care of itself. So is there a quarterback controversy in Athens this year heading into 2024? Absolutely not. But there are questions that have to be answered. And Georgia's effectiveness in answering those questions will determine exactly how much success they have on the field here in 2024. Today is a wonderful day because I noticed this morning I woke up to a good piece of news. It's the kind of thing that sort of puts you in a good mood. Now, I don't know about you. I love all the numbers. They're all great. But I have a certain affinity for the even numbers. Nice, solid, round numbers. And today, I woke up to the fact that we have now reached 6,100 subscribers here on YouTube. So I'm thrilled to share that with you because it is about you. It is because of you that I can share that glorious news with you. And it is truly glorious. I mean, the only thing that's better is having 6,200 or 6,300 and so on, because that means that we, as Dog Nation, are coming together in greater numbers to celebrate, discuss, and enjoy Georgia Bulldogs football. So I want to say thank you for being here with me and making that possible, but I also just want to take this opportunity to let you know that, yes, we're not going to stop at 6,101. I hope you will continue to share these videos around, comment, support the channel, because we are doing everything we can do here in the offseason to provide you all of the Georgia Bulldogs content that you want to see in a way that you're not going to receive it anywhere else. We are on the march to 10K and beyond, but you have to put one foot in front of the other, and I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Make sure that if you're not subscribed to the channel, that you go ahead and do that so that you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that we do all along the way, whether it's on the community page or 
it's on short form video or long form video, whatever it is. You don't want to miss it. So make sure that you are subscribed. We are also an audio only podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to get your podcasts and take us with you everywhere you go to stay up to date on what's happening with the dogs. Be sure to check the description below this video here on YouTube and on the podcast page because you can sign up for our newsletter. That's where you're going to learn about any and everything that has to do with the Damn Beast Media or the How About That <laughs> Dogs cast first. So make sure that you're signed up over there. It takes you two seconds and you will not be sorry. I promise you that much. And there will never be spam or anything else like that. I will never sell your information. This is simply a quick way to disseminate the best information to Dog Nation that I know. And as always, we want to take this chance to say thank you to our channel members. Did you know you could become a member of the channel here? And if you do, then you get access to certain cool things that maybe everybody else doesn't get to do. You have cool emojis to use here in the chats when you leave comments on the community pages, all those sorts of things. So thank you to each and every one of you that choose to support the channel. It literally means everything. We could not do this without you. And I simply, simply cannot say that enough. I say it every week. It is never enough. And here at the end, last but certainly not least, I want to take the opportunity to say happy birthday to Mrs. Beast. Together, we have made another trip around the sun. Back in December, we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. We've been together for 30 years. I know you can't tell by looking at me, but, you know, we've been at it for a minute. Today is her day. She is a huge reason this channel is possible. It would not have happened without her continued support, guidance, and inspiration, if I'm being completely honest with you. You don't stick with a guy who covers sports for a living for 30 years unless you love the game. She knows the game. She loves the game. She helps me be better, better at my job, better in my life, a better father, a better person, a better human every day. I am thankful for her. I love you. And I want to wish you the very best birthday possible. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of your friends, take care of each other. And go dogs. Tell them how about them fucking dogs. That's what I told them. <laughs> <laughs>